Hey guys, it's Ryan here with Hobbies and Man. Once again, and today we're going to be doing another uh, comic book issue review. We're going to be looking at Thundercats number three, which is a great cover. I love this. I think it looks great. I also really love this detail here of her skin peeking through her outfit here. I think that looks great right there. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I really like this. Um, but I also like the, like this type of cat girl a lot. So it is what it is, but very good cover. Uh, okay issue, right? So like it's still done by Declan Shelby and Drew Moss. And I actually like Drew Moss's artwork a lot more this time around. I think I'm getting used to it and I'm growing to appreciate it more. So that's good. However, in terms of like storytelling, although there's good elements, I think that it's going quite slow. And uh, I'm not sure that this is the right thing to do um, because this is... Like, I've not heard anyone say that this is bad, right? But I've also not really heard anyone say that this is great. Like, I mean, you know, uh, Sal from Comic Pop talked to Dec Declan Shelby about it. They seemed interested in, in the kind of idea. And I am liking the story, but it feels like there's a lot of setup still. Like, it, it's, it's the third uh, issue, and we haven't really met all of the players yet. And although this, you know, on in and of itself, like, in the bubble that is the Thundercats series, it's not a big deal. If you compare it to other series that are from the same time period that are having a recent revival, like Transformers, we're kind of slow, right? Like, I don't remember feeling like this by the time I got to the third issue of the Transformers comic, right? Um, but I am kind of feeling like we haven't really gotten anywhere yet uh, here. However, I am still enjoying it. Like, I like what's going on. I like the things that are happening. I'm just, like, a little bit worried that this is going to be bad uh, in the long run because people are going to start, you know, dropping away from the series, right? Because it's generally understood that the first issue is going to be amazing, right, in terms of sales. And then it's going to kind of split in half. And then from there, you're kind of, you know, all bits are off whether you continue to collect people and people come back to the series later or not, right? And I think that if you're taking this long to get to the third issue and you still haven't really figured out what the main storyline is, people are gonna start really leaving quickly, right? So I'm not really sure. I mean, I'm just kind of spitballing here. I'm not really sure that you know my assessment is correct or anything, uh, nor do I think that I would be. I'm just kind of like thinking about my personal views on it. Um, and that's kind of how I feel about it, right? So that's enough about that. Let's actually get into the issue here. So basically we see Calico who is the character that was introduced the last episode, or the last issue, uh, walking around that night. And she bumps into Panthro, who's kind of working late. Uh, and they have this conversation, it's kind of tense. But Panthro basically admits, yeah, I don't trust you, there's something wrong with you, we're gonna figure it out. But for now, because Lionel is interested, we're gonna allow you to be here, right? And so she leaves. And she finds Lionel and she kind of plays up the, uh, the sad girl kind of vibe. Uh, and this kind of attracts Lionel quite a bit. Um, and then Lionel uses the Sword of Omens to see if there's anyone around, uh, if there's any danger around, because uh, he wants to go outside to walk with Calico. Um, and then as he uses the Sword of Omens, something happens kind of randomly. This like doorway opens in front of him uh, and out of it comes Snarf, which is quite nice. I, I am very happy that we get to see Snarf. And I mentioned in a previous uh, episode of this, uh, previous video, that um, the way that they drew Snarf was like creepy as fuck because it looked like a human face on, a, on like a cat face uh, or like on a cat body and it looked really creepy. That's not the case here. Snarf looks a little bit different from what I remember him from the cartoon, but he doesn't look bad. I actually think he looks nice. Um, so I like that. Um, then we transition over to a, a different storyline here where Yaga and Mumra are kind of talking. Actually, Mumra is talking to uh, Jaga's... Um, uh, what's it called, like Force Ghost, right? And he's trying to get information out of it, but it doesn't really say anything. And then it just like opens its mouth really creepily, really widely, and it looks like it's haunted, right? And Mumra is like, oh, this is bad. I don't know what the fuck this means. And it's, it, it's interesting to have this kind of thread pulled, but not really shown to us yet, right? So I'm curious to see what happens. Uh, Lionel screamed because of the Snarf thing. And so we get to see Chitara running down the halls, trying to figure out what the hell's going on. She ends up, you know, running into Lionel and she's like, oh, look, it's Snarf. I'm like, what's going on? Uh, and it's quite cute. Uh, and they all chat with Snarf and Lionel specifically has a telepathic connection with Snarf, which is interesting. This is a bit different from before. Uh, and Calico says something weird, which is that she heard Snarf, although I'm not sure that she did. 
And if she said that, everyone's kind of confused because like no one is supposed to be able to do that except Lionel. So I'm very curious what the hell's going on here. I mean, of course we know that Calico is tied to Mumra and she does the glowing red eye thing quite a few times in this uh, issue. So we'll see where that goes. But it was an interesting little kind of tidbit of information that was uh, fed to the Thundercats so that they can kind of have this situation here. Uh, and then um, they go into this uh, doorway from which Snarf came from and they basically find all of the th treasures of Thundera, uh, sorry, of Thundera. Uh, and so uh, basically their, their cultural heritage has not been destroyed. And I'm curious to see why that is. Uh, maybe Third Earth is a future version of Thundera and uh, Thundera basically got destroyed, but then the Thundercats got caught in a time loop and then they came out afterwards, kind of like in the, you know, um, Buzz Lightyear movie. I can't remember how it was in the original series, um, but it's, you know, it might be something like that, which would be cool. I don't really care either way. I just want to know what's going on here. Um, and then uh, we transition over to another storyline, which is Slythe, who uh, has been captured. And then this is introducing the monkey uh, mutants who are led by Monkeyan or Mon Monkeyan. I, I can't remember how to say his name, but, you know, the other mutants that you're used to from the cartoon finally showed up and it's as nice. And I'm very happy about that. And uh, they're not really monkeys. They're more like baboons, but uh, they call themselves the monkeys or something like that. So we're, we'll go with it, right? But um, yeah, then Panthro disrespects Lionel. He gets upset and he actually uh, basically assaults Lionel. And uh, Chitara is like, no, nah, fuck that shit. And she uh, pushes uh, Panthro and then challenges him to a thunder duel. And this is an interesting concept. Uh, basically, the thunder duel is the way in which the Thundercats, the Royal Guard, uh, managed to handle disputes. Lionel, as their leader and as their king, can't actually uh, engage in these duels. So someone else has to do it for him. In this case, Chitara did so. And she does it against Panthro because he is kind of getting too uppity. Uh, he's trying to, uh, you know, he, he's kind of not doing what he's supposed to, right? And so we have this cool fight here, which was really awesome. I really liked it. I thought it was great. Uh, there was a lot of action sequences here that were really phenomenal. Uh, Panthro crushing Chitara's armor, her doing some acrobatics into kind of di divesting her of her, uh, 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 the, herself of this armor and then kind of getting a hand up because now she can move faster and then being the shit of Panthro was all great. I really enjoyed all of that stuff. I really, really liked it. I think it was good. Um, and then the tension dissipates quite quickly, which is good. Uh, and Lionel and Calico have this romantic scene at the end that reminds me a lot of the scene where Anakin and Padme are talking when Padme tells them that she's pregnant uh, in episode three, right? So it has that same kind of vibe to it, which is great. I love that imagery. Uh, and I'm curious if Declan Shelby and Drew Moss use that as imp inspiration. I doubt it, but it looks very similar and I like it a lot. So yeah, and then that's basically the end here. So overall, good stuff. I like the artwork better this time. And like I said before, I think the story is good, but I feel like it's going, kind of going slowly, right? Like there hasn't been a fight between, you know, the um, the Mutants and, and the Thundercats yet. So when is that going to happen? Like are Slythe and the Monkeyan uh, going to join forces or are they going to have their own fight before they uh, go fight the Thundercats? I'm not really sure. And I'm curious to see where this goes. So I can't wait for the next issue. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on Thundercats number three. Let me know what you guys thought down below. Thank you guys very much for watching and see you guys later.